Thank you for tuning in once again. Many of you probably realize that I've been a big fan of the writings of Father Richard Rohr for many, many years. I have found him to be a prophetic and insightful voice, and at times even a mystical one. My remarks today are actually adapted from one of his daily meditations that's entitled Wounded Healers. He suggested that if he were to name the Christian religion, he would call it the way of the wound. I think that's quite interesting. Jesus came into the world because of love, out of love for us. But the reality is the world really couldn't stand that much pure love. And we continue to this very day to put him to death by our refusals to love in so many ways. Jesus agreed to come into the world in order to be the wounded one. As the letter to the Philippians says, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. So we who are his disciples are these strange believers in a wounded healer. We actually come to God not through our strength, but through our weaknesses. We learn wisdom and come to God not by doing things all right, but generally through doing it wrong and facing suffering and failure. And that's why this time of pandemic contains a great richness for us if we are open to seeing it. There's a great deal to learn, a lot of transformation that has to take place for us as individuals as well as for our culture and our world. If we were going to create a religion, we would never have thought of creating a naked, bleeding, wounded man as our main religious image. It has to be the most unlikely image for God and the most illogical one for anyone we could call omnipotent. None of us in our wildest imaginations would have come up with it. But it exposes a central problem of human existence for God to have come in the world in this form and in this way. Sadly, we have become so accustomed to the cross, probably because we have domesticated it and we've just seen it so frequently, that it no longer really shocks and scandalizes the way this image of, of all that this image of failure is actually trying to say. Being wounded, suffering, and dying are the quickest and surest paths to truly living in Christ. But using a scapegoat is our most preferred method. What we do is we deny our pain, our sins, our suffering, and we project them on somebody else. We're victims, never the perpetrators. All of us who are trying to blame somebody for this virus are doing scapegoating. This is not anyone's fault. Viruses happen. They have happened throughout history, and despite all of our wonderful medical knowledge, they will continue to happen. And then until we are enlightened by grace, we probably can't even see this. It remains safely hidden in our unconscious, but that's where it gets played out in all of our interactions. But once we spot and stop the pattern, game over. The cross of Jesus was actually a mirror held up to us in history so that we could spot the scapegoating pattern and then stop participating in it. Only our true deep God self can carry the anxiety that simply comes with the complexity of living. The little self, by itself is unable to do so. If we do not pray, we cannot live the gospel because the self is simply not strong or deep enough to hold the anxiety and fear. If we do not transform our pain, Roar reminds us, we will always transmit it. That's very significant. If we do not transform our pain, we will always transmit it. Always somebody else will have to suffer because we don't know how to suffer. That's really what it all comes down to. Most of us are like electric wires most of the time. What comes in is what goes out. So if somebody calls us a name, we call them a name back. If somebody treats us poorly, we treat them poorly back. We simply tend to pass on the same energy that is given to us. Now, if we compare that electric wire 
to those big gray transformers that we see on utility poles. We know that a dangerous current or voltage comes into that box, but something happens inside that big gray can, and what comes out, in fact, is now helpful, and it's productive, and it's useful. That is exactly what Jesus did on the cross. That's what Jesus does with the suffering that came to him. He did not return the negative energy that was directed at him, not during his lifetime, nor when he hung upon the cross. He held it inside, he transformed it, he made it into something much better. Theologically, this is how we say, he took away the sin of the world. He refused to pass it on. And until we understand that, there will be no new person, and consequently, no new world. This is a great and awesome and very difficult path that we have been called to work, walk as his disciples. And we do so always aware that the wounded one walks with us through it all. Thank you for tuning in.